What's up guys, this is Balash from Racing Brick. Two days ago you could see my preview video about the brand new Chevrolet Camaro Z28. If you missed that one then I suggest to watch it by clicking on the link in the top right corner. We took a close look at the box, black on black design, pretty cool huh? Ok sorry for the bad joke, this is the actual box here. I still don't really like how the car blends in the background, it either needs more light and reflections or less black in the background. It gets even worse on this side, you sort of recognize the contour of the car but the lower section lacks any details. The back of the box has a much better angle, revealing the party tricks of the set, it can be built as a hardtop or a convertible, and there's more, we get different color choices for the stripes, so you can really customize your build. The size of the box is by the way exactly the same as the one for the Porsche, as I see their piece count is pretty close as well. Now let's open the box. The set has 1456 pieces, the retail price is 170 euros or dollars, unfortunately the lower US price in the press release was incorrect. The expected release date is the 1st of August. There are 8 numbered bags inside, the manual and the sticker sheet without any protection and 4 tires. As you see the manual could use an envelope, similarly sized 18 plus sets usually have one. In the manual we got a little history lesson about the model, with a complete timeline of the different generations on the next pages. A few words from the SES designer, and then the customization options. Really, black on black here as well with shiny paper, it's like some anti-photography system. Anyway, here we have more details about the options, we can choose between a hardtop and a convertible, the color of the striping, and even the headlight covers and the license plates have different options. I find this remark in the corner a little bit confusing, I really hope I don't have to go online to be able to try and build all these variations. Here is the part list, please pause the video if you are interested, now let's start building. We start with a good old study technic frame as usual, nothing exciting so far. This is the build at the end of bag 1, lots of colors and lots of stud and pin connection possibilities all around. The rear section got some nice node blocks, then we add these arches that are a bit surprising here, would look more appropriate in a castle set. Now that's something weird, there's a printed tile added with the number 5. Here comes the radio and the rest of the transmission tunnel, but that number 5 is still visible. I tried to look it up, but no luck. If anyone is a Camaro expert, please help with this. What does that number mean? Let me know in the comments. We have the steering column in place at the end of the next phase. Interestingly, there are no gears involved this time. The steering wheel is directly connected with the steering rack through that U-joint. Previous models paid more attention to this. If you want a more realistic range of motion for the steering wheel, then you need to add some gearing. Here is the front axle, it is also quite colorful and it is built mostly of Technic elements. We need to connect the links first, which is a bit tricky, then push the whole assembly in place. You can see now how the steering will work. Here is a pretty neat structure to form the angled front section. This one is attached to the main assembly with the hinge and those clips only act as a support on the sides. We have some colorful structures in the engine bay and of back 3. The door is a usual snot build, nothing outstanding but it has nice connections and curves at the necessary places and the support mechanism with those pieces instead of the usual hinges is something refreshing and it still works reliably. The trunk is covered now and we have the basis for the rear lights as well. You can also see the engine being built with the radiator and other accessories. The wheel well covers look pretty cool, I don't think these panels were used for this specific purpose previously. And here are these very cool brand new 4x10 fender pieces. Not sure if they should be called fenders or quarter panels, something in between I guess. They are a great addition to this car line as it has a subtle fender flare that was not achievable on the previous cars. It has a thickness of two plates and the bottom section follows nicely the curvature of those curved slopes. Time to fill all the gaps around the wheel and then we do the same on the other side. This steering wheel goes in a totally incorrect position and with these nice engine details added we arrive to the end of back 5. The next phase begins with the lower bumper section, it is attached upside down with tow balls. And a pretty unexpected assembly, a fully Technic front lip. A few tricky things to add at the rear, like this one with the clip, the upside down slopes, the massive exhaust pipes and then comes the rear fender area. A nice touch, just like on the Speed Champions charger, we get printed transparent ties for the rear lights. Then comes the top of the bumper, you can see how that small angled assembly held in place with the clips blends in here nicely. Two very unusual pieces to add, this X was in a lot of sets previously but with a red head, now it's fully grey. I'm not sure how visible it is, there are holes deep down there where you need to push in these items, looks great once in place. We can choose between two license plates, there are no hints about the designer this time, Panther refers to the internal development codename of the Camaro. 
We add the smooth details over the rear wheels and then go back to the front to mount these angled pieces for the grills. And now it's time to decide the color of the striping. Here we have the three options and the corresponding parts. I think I will go with white for the first attempt. Yet another option to choose from, the headlights. I think I will go with this one, it's a bit tricky to install. The other set has a nice metallic print on the tires by the way, these are not stickers. After adding a few bits to the back, here comes the rear seat that is a, I would say, traditional Creator Expert sideways build with an added cool little Model T magazine with the classic 5541 Blue Fury Hot Rod. It's a fairly odd choice, that set was released in 1995, so it does not seem to be related to this car, maybe it's a hint about the next Icons vehicle. This set was actually re-released once, so I would be surprised to see it again, but let me know your theories in the comments. Here comes the second steering wheel of the set, as you remember the range of motion is minimal unfortunately. Now here's the hood with three color options again, we chose white previously, so let's stick to it. We don't get tiles only this time, there's also a plate because this side is visible as well and the black tile as the last item. It's a bit tricky to put in place, but works after all. Here's the dashboard with the gauges, the smooth sticker is kind of weird on this rough surface. The last item for this phase is the windscreen, we have to put stickers on the sides for the A-pillars. We are at the final bag, time to decide if we build the hardtop or the convertible, and unfortunately we have some ugly scratched bricks here out of the box. So, let's build the hardtop variant first. Here's the rear window, it is held in place by three clips and the support side is actually something pretty cool that I forgot to show you earlier. Do you see these pieces in the big snot block? Those are vehicle bases, a special part for city cars with suspension, something that I wasn't even aware of but I will definitely take a closer look later on. They have just the exact angle for the rear window support, a pretty ingenious building technique. Then we add the C-pillars, the trunk lid with the matching stripes, then comes the top edge of the windshield. Here's the roof with the rear view mirror and some cool hanging dices, it snaps in place nicely. We only have to assemble the cool chrome rims and mount the wheels, then the final touch is to add the ice cream rear view mirrors and we are finished. I was afraid of this conversion, but switching between the hardtop and the convertible options is thankfully much easier than in the case of the Porsche 911, there the Targa and the Turbo versions required a complex rebuild and assemblies had to be taken apart as pieces were used in both builds. Here you can more or less keep things together, I don't say it's a super quick swap but after a few attempts you will know how to do it by heart. So here is our fully assembled set and I think it looks great. I like that the designers were brave enough to choose black and the stripes work well. Changing the color of the stripes can be done fairly quickly, although removing certain pieces might be a challenge. The replacement of the headlights is similar, needs some practice. The structure and the details of the front bumper is pretty cool, I've seen people commenting about the new angular plates on the bumper, well that's not a plate, but it doesn't make the solution less creative. The rear section also works for me, I like the printed lights, and this part usage is still really nice. The steering angle of the front wheels is surprisingly big, but the lack of gearing between the wheels and the steering wheel still disappoints me. I love the rear view mirrors, and the interior has a decent look, the dices in the heart of version are also cool. Now a bit about the negative side, I mentioned the fender pieces. I'm really happy to see them being made, but by choosing this exact model and year, I think the designers shot themselves in the foot a little bit. Why? Because the 69 Camaro had a very distinctive character line starting at the front wheel arch, which is completely missing from this build. Here the curvature starts much lower, and there's nothing connecting the two fenders. If it was a 1970 Camaro, then this era would be a much better match altogether, but then the front should have been very different of course. Another missing key feature is the lack of gills here in front of the rear wheel. Since it is constructed of multiple pieces, I understand why we didn't get a sticker here, but maybe a printed solution spread over multiple pieces could have helped. The wheels are also a bit wobbly, but that's already nitpicking I think. Otherwise the set looks great with other Creator Expert cars, especially with the Mustang. I'm not sure why people say that they are too similar in color and shape, well if you put the real car side by side it will be the same. So let's sum it up. I think the car is a great addition to the Creator Expert garage, some might say that it's not that different from the Mustang, but I'm really happy to see it instead of some rare supercar. The details are nice, all the different customization options are very cool, and I'm sure we'll see even more variations by the fans after the release. Some details I mentioned are a bit off and I wish it had a more realistic steering, but considering the limitations of the material, I think the designer did a decent job. As I see, the biggest pain point will be the price increase compared to the predecessors, but unfortunately nowadays everything gets more and more expensive with the raising energy and material prices, so this is not something unexpected.
Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. I really suggest to subscribe with notifications as more exciting LEGO videos are coming soon. See you next time. Bye-bye.